not just in politics. <coughs> well, I'm back again. The phone rang. I made it for 15 minutes without the phone ringing, but it was a business matter. A friend of ours from uh, New Mexico called, and I needed to speak with him. What I do when I'm speaking on the phone, though, is, and, and, and you know, it's probably inconsiderate of me, but I put the phone down on the table and continue to push the glass uh, while I'm speaking. You can get away with that while you're fine grinding because there's not a whole lot of noise. When you're involved in rough grinding, particularly when you're hogging out or, or roughing out a curve, they call it hogging out, uh, that can be pretty loud. Uh, when I was at uh, Dick Parker's telescope workshop, which he conducts in the basement of his house, uh, I walked in and somebody was uh, working on, you know, hogging out a curve. And it answered all, you know, the most important question I had from my younger days of telescope making, can you hear it upstairs? Oh, yeah. You can absolutely hear it upstairs. Very loud. So I started this at 2.48. That means I'm going to continue on this until 2.43, recharge, and that will be my final charge for this set of three. And I will be done somewhere around between 2.58 and 3 o'clock. And then what I'll do is I'll go clean up, and I've got an appointment at my office at 4.30. Can you believe 4.30 on a Friday, on a Saturday afternoon, rather? But people need services. I've got to do what I've got to do to, to help them, and uh, it'll give me a couple of hours off from this, and maybe I can come back tonight, spend an hour grinding. That will have been three hours for today, and probably four hours within the... 24 hour period uh, and finish with the 5 micron, clean everything up, get ready for the 3 micron, and I don't think I'll be able to get that all done tomorrow, Sunday. I try not to work on Sunday, but quite frankly, to me, this isn't work. This is just something that I do because I like doing it. I'll probably have my kids tomorrow. And uh, one of them, my 13-year-old, uh, Elizabeth, is working on a four and a quarter inch mirror. I'd like to get hers moving along, so I might have her come down here and push some glass while I supervise and instruct so that we can get hers ready for polishing also and subsequently uh, coating. You know, it was very inspiring to Elizabeth to go to Stella Fane. She had a wonderful time. She got to meet John Dobson. I've met him a few times. And she also got to meet a bunch of other people that make telescopes. There was one little girl who won the awards, Samantha. She was absolutely lovely. And Elizabeth met her. I think they're, they've got each other's email addresses. And uh, she told me, Daddy, she wants to win a uh, telescope award next year. Well, you know, Estella Fane, they're pretty good about that, particularly with the kids. And so if she wants to win one, I'm going to help her. I'll do what I can do to help her. I have bought uh, some glass, and she's working on it. I bought a tube from a commercial tube manufacturer. Actually, irrigation pipe works wonderfully as uh, telescope tubes. And there's a company called Hasting pipe, Hastings Pipe, which actually separately sells uh, telescope tubes. They actually have a, a part on their website for telescope tubes, and they go up to, I think, 10 inch, which will house an 8 inch telescope. So I placed an order with them. I found them to be very nice. You know, you don't want to be burdening such a company too much with your orders for telescope tubes because uh, they're just doing it as an accommodation to us as amateur telescope makers. Our orders are relatively small. These are folks that deal in miles and miles and miles of tubes. And it's 2.53 already, so it's time for me to recharge. Take it all the way off. Shake it up. Looks like I'm running a little low on the 5 micron solution. By the way, the 5 micron solution, what I generally do with the aluminum oxide 
is I make it 50% water, 50% aluminum oxide. I place the glass on carefully, back and forth. I don't slide it on, I just place it straight down. Make sure it doesn't slam down so I don't break or chip anything. Don't put it down on the edge, just try to put it down. Complete face over complete face. Plans for telescopes. There are a number of plans out there. The most common plan for the amateur telescope maker is the Dobsonian. Everybody wants the Dobsonian mount, and for good reason. It's a wonderful design. It's very effective. It works better for big light buckets. When I told John Dobson that my daughter Elizabeth was working on a four and a quarter inch, his immediate response was, too small. Do a 14 and a quarter inch. Why not a 14 and a quarter inch? Well, she's a little girl. She's not that little, but she's a little girl. 14 and a quarter inch is just beyond what she can do for her size. A four and a quarter inch is perfect. It's the kind of thing she'll be able to carry around. She'll be able to bring it to school, to science fairs. So John didn't have too many words of encouragement, unfortunately. John's a 91-year-old man. He has his own way of looking at things be 92 shortly, I guess. Um, there were, however, plans on the internet for a four and a quarter inch, about 39 pages of plans. Required a lot of cutting. I did not have a lot in the way of tools. You've seen since I've acquired some tools uh, in the earlier part of this video. And so I will be uh, providing Elizabeth with certain tools that she needs to do what she does, telescope making. And I will help her with the cuts because I don't want her cutting on a table saw. Telescope working groups are really nice to have also. A bunch of guys get together, men, women, whatever. A bunch of people get together, I shouldn't be sexist about it, and uh, make telescopes. And share their knowledge, share their common experiences. I highly recommend it. Excuse me, the phone's ringing again. Now we're back. The phone is ringing again. It's 2.58. Another couple of minutes and I'll have been done with 45 minutes grinding. And I'll only have 45 minutes left to go. on this level of grit, this number five. Sometimes it gets a little rough, a little dry. I just want to squirt some water on it. You don't want to push it too much if there's no water, if the discs are too dry. You're not looking to get sleeks or scratches. You're just looking to get flat. You're looking to have the abrasives work. You know, my clock has a uh, thermometer and a humidity gauge, and I see that the relative humidity down here right now is 82%. That's quite a bit. 
the temperature is 69 degrees, so it's just sort of, it's not cool, but it's definitely dank. It is now 3 o'clock. I'm done. I'm going to go wash off these surfaces now, go about my day. I hope you enjoyed watching my video as much as I've enjoyed making it. You know what I look like now. If you see me on the ATM list, uh, you'll be able to place a face with the name. If you see me at any telescope making events, or if you see me on the street, just stop and say hello. Wish you all the best. Thank you for watching. Francis O'Reilly, signing off.